Wake Speed, Basic Configuration, Apple vs. Android OTG On The Go Cable, Connecting the application to the Wake Speed Regulator. There are a number of functions that require connection to the regulator, such as monitoring, updating, logging, firmware, and even sending the configuration file. All of these require connection to the Wake Speed Regulator. The Android application allows you to use what's known as an on-the-go cable. You have one end that connects into the tablet. Pick the connector that's appropriate for your device. The other end is a standard USB Type-A socket like you find on many computers. You'll also need a USB cable. Now, the USB cable has two ends. One end that will connect into the OTG cable and the other end that will connect into the wake speed regulator. Most wake speed regulators you get today will use this type of connection, called a Type B and most commonly used on printers. Some of the original wake speed regulators used a USB micro connector. Open the box to find which type of USB socket you have and gather the appropriate cable. In addition to being able to use an Android device to monitor and transfer an update to firmware, we also have tools to allow you to update configuration files, transfer configuration files, as well as update the firmware running on Windows computers. These are all downloadable from the WakeSpeed website. If using the app on an Apple device, you can use the app to create configuration files and share those with others or with yourself to a Windows computer or Android device to transfer to the WakeSpeed regulator. Please note, you will not be able to transfer directly from your Apple device to the regulator without some sort of intermediate. We do have a product plan for a wireless module in the future. When that's available, you'll be able to use both Android and Apple versions of the WakeSpeed application directly with all of their capabilities. Basic Configuration We will now show you how to use the WakeSpeed application to create a configuration file for your specific install. The nice thing about using the WakeSpeed application for this is it really fine-tunes the device to your exact alternator using the exact battery in the system truly customizing the configuration for your install. Note that these steps are identical whether using an Android or Apple version of the app. Begin on the configuration screen of the app. Configurations are straightforward. Let's begin on the alternator tab. Select the alternator you're using by choosing your brand and model. You also have the opportunity to enter a name that is used if you have a CAN-connected display, such as if you're in the Victron environment, Marine Install, or RVC. This is the name that the Wake Speed Regulator presents. In this example, we'll call this Main. From here, you have a couple of other options. Small Alternator Mode. When doing higher energy installs, you can put a lot of stress on the alternator. So we often recommend that when you're first starting out, you turn on small alternator mode. What this does is it caps the alternator to 75% of its capability. Do your configuration and your install. Run it for a while, see if things are stable, and ensure you're not overheating. And if everything is good, then you can come back to this setting and turn off the small alternator mode. The next toggle is Sense RPMs via Stator Wire. There are some features in the wake speed regulator that are RPM dependent such as white space or idle mitigations. If you want to use RPM features on the wake speed regulator, there are a couple of ways you can do it. If you happen to be CAN connected into your chassis, you're often able to pick up the RPMs from the chassis itself. Or you can use a stator wire, the yellow wire in our wiring harness. If you want to do this, this toggle allows you to turn it on, perform the calibration, set your pulley ratios, and access additional features that are available within the wake speed regulator. For each of these features, I would encourage you to read the wake speed user's guide or the wake speed 500 communication and configuration guide, which goes into much more detail about which each of these do. For this particular install, we are not going to worry about hooking up the stator wire. We'll now proceed and select the next tab, battery. We're going to select the battery that we are using on our system, which you'll pick by brand and then model. For this example, we'll use the Battleborn BB112 lithium ion battery. Next, we'll define how many batteries we're using. This is helpful for the WakeSpeed app to understand how to manage the batteries appropriately. 
In this case, let's say we have seven. An interesting thing to demonstrate is that the app actually shows you how you're going to connect your seven batteries. You'll see a diagram showing each of them. In this example, these are 12 volt, 100 amp hour batteries. We're going to connect them in a series to make up a 24 volt battery bank. Here, we have one left over, and that one in red to show that you have a leftover battery, which helps to ensure that you don't misconfigure your system. So we'll actually just install six batteries. Now that we've selected the battery we're going to use, the app will show you the charge profile that is set for this particular battery. Note that this is the charge profile that's been worked out with the manufacturer, and you don't have to edit any of this stuff. All information populates automatically from the databases previously mentioned. We'll now proceed to the next tab, System. Here you can define things such as, do I have a shunt? And yes, I want to have a shunt. If you happen to wire it backwards, you can either change those wires or you can just toggle this and it'll reverse it. You can also define what your shunt is. 500 amp, 50 millivolt is very common. In this case, there's no BMS available as the Battleborn battery we selected has a built-in BMS. So that's why we're not able to select it at this point. You've now created your configuration customized for your install. Now, let's save that configuration at which point you may be asked whether you want to allow access. Select Yes. You can then type the name you'd like to give this particular configuration. We'll call this one Main First Try. Tap Save, and the file is now saved. Now, let's look over an example for when you may not have a shunt installed on your battery system. Selecting a battery. This time, We'll pick a Victron instead of a Battleborn battery. And we'll use a six battery setup. Going back to the System tab, you'll see you can now select a BMS. In this case, I'm going to pick the Smart BMS. The Link Smart BMS provides battery current to the Wake Speed product via the CAN bus, so we don't actually need to use the dedicated sensors on the Wake Speed. One interesting thing you could do here is go up here and toggle this battery current shunt option off to indicate you aren't going to have a shunt on the battery. This will allow you to put a shunt actually on the alternator. And one thing that's helpful for this is the wake speed will now be able to monitor alternator current. This would mostly be used for displays. If you have a NEMA 2000 display, you would see alternator current along with battery current. If you have a Victron Servo installed, you would see alternator output along with battery output. Now, tap the stacked menu bar in the top corner of the app for some additional options. New, Save As, Open Configuration, Import Configuration, and Share Configuration. Share Configuration allows you to share configurations that your device contains. Email is one of these share options. When emailing the configuration, let's take a look at what the other side of that looks like. Inside the received email, you'll notice there's two attachments. There's a text file and a JSON file. If we open the text file, these are all the commands that are sent down to the WakeSpeed device for configuration. So if you're going to transfer to a Windows computer, for example, and then use that to configure your WakeSpeed regulator, the text file is what you would use. The JSON file contains a lot more information. If you're going to share the configuration file with another person who has the WakeSpeed app, the JSON file is what you would use. On the next tab, Engine. There are a number of things we define on this page, and it exposes some of the capabilities that the WakeSpeed products have to manage. Not just the battery and the alternator, but also the engine and chassis needs. For example, let's define maximum engine loading. Oftentimes, smaller engines have difficulties accelerating or going uphill, or even just trying to pass another vehicle. This is a way that we can declare to the regulator, I don't want the alternator to load the engine any more than a certain percentage. So for this example, 60%. And if I ever find 60% loading or higher, we'll start backing off the alternator. This then allows for more of the engine capability to be applied to the wheels. This particular feature capability does require CAN connection into the chassis. And we pull out J1939 engine loading information. 
Another application feature that we have that's very helpful, especially in marine space, is something that we call white space. White space allows us to define by your RPM a pullback of the alternator as the RPMs change. So for example, if you're in a marine install and at full throttle, often they'll design it so that the engine output matches the prop loading. You'll probably want to pull back the alternator a little bit so you don't overload your engine. Same down at lower RPMs. You may want to pull the alternator back a little bit to allow better maneuverability when there's not a lot of torque available for the engine. What we do here is we declare maximum RPMs for the engine. We also indicate whether we want this to always be active or if we just want to have it active when we apply power to the feature end. You can learn more in the WakeSpeed 500 Communication and Configuration Guide. Here, we're going to toggle this to Always Enabled. In this particular case, we've declared the engine RPM to be 6,000 RPM. You'll then notice these RPM buckets. So we want to go and edit these, and now we have sliders. So we can say up here at the high end, we only want to be using 9% of the alternator capability. And that's because the prop matches the engine output, and we don't want to be overloading the engine. Then, as the RPMs are lower, we've got a lot more excess capability that the engine is able to produce, but the prop is not able to take. We call that white space, or unused capability. This is a way for you to custom shape the alternator loading to the engine at the given RPMs. This is a fairly advanced feature and is available with version 2.5.0 of Wake Speed firmware and above. Now, go ahead and save this again.